Welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate, episode 95. I know all about waiting. Welcome to another episode. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about different things. Uh, last week, we had a great conversation around what we felt was an honest conversation about high initiative ships in the X-Wing game. Tonight, what I wanted to do is kind of talk a little bit about where we feel the direction of the game could go, some of the improvements or additions that could happen, things that we like about the game, um, and kind of just talk about like what we feel would be a roadmap for the next two years. We're also going to be talking about Nickel City Season 3 Week 5 results. JJ did not let us down this week because uh, he didn't play. So he didn't win. He didn't play. He didn't let us down. That being said, we are also going to be talking about some user submitted lists. And if that wasn't enough, we will be talking about celebration 2023 right at the end of the show. If you're new to the show, please click that follow link. If you're watching us on discord, if you follow us on the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast or on our YouTube channel. We also are going to have a, donation link so we have something new that we want to introduce and the store champ season is upon us i am in the process of upgrading my cpu and working to build something that will allow me to possibly stream live events or attend other live events to help with streaming with that being said it costs money I did not get very much money back in my taxes this year, and the majority of my taxes are going to upgrade my computer so that I can at least compete online with uh, the Gregs and the Knicks and the GSPs of the world. With that being said, what I did want to do, though, is just put a donation link up because we are going to have Michigan GT this year, and we are 90% on the way to having store champ kits available now before i go any farther let me bring jj into the mix jj welcome to the show tonight how are you sir doing all right man i'm excited for uh for all the stuff that happened over this weekend uh i was glued to pretty much all weekend watching star Wars celebrations and man there was just so many good panels there were so many uh like uh like previews and stuff that we're gonna see but we'll get to in just a moment though but uh but yeah absolutely excited to uh to get started yeah so what we want to do is is our goal is is how do i get um more prize support for michigan gt so i have been working with one of my local stores um that I won't name until they confirm they're either going to donate or let me purchase the store champ kits. And what we want to do is support our local community and put on an official like world style tournament where you can get price support. Now last year for Michigan GT, we ran extended. If we get the store champ kits, that will not be extended this year. And Ken doesn't know that but that will be an official determination. If we get world's tickets, we will not be getting extended play. Sad day. Hopefully they give us some e-wings before that. That would be nice. So Nick won't be so disappointed. Um, but I have 90% confirmation that we have at least one and possibly two store champ kits to have a total of 64 players to come and try to win a world's ticket. Michigan GT will be the first weekend in October in Lansing, Michigan. Um, it is an amazing time if you haven't been there. We will have more information and other prize support uh, coming up over the next couple of months. But because officially our podcast is sponsoring this, I guess. So um, I will just let the cat out of the bag. Officially, we are sponsoring um, any prize support that is not covered with Michigan GT is coming out of the planning phase syndicate pocket. So with that being said, I have thrown a donation link up. If you hit exclamation mark PPS live, all almost all caps, you can see it in the chat. 
you will get a donation link to our PayPal. And if you donate, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. JJ doesn't even know this yet. If you donate and we hit our goal, so we're gonna our first goal I set at five hundred dollars. That money will be not put into my pocket at all. That money will 100% go into any price support that is not covered um, by Michigan GT. And then it will go towards um, purchasing extra price support as handout prices for everybody. But with that being said, if you donate to our link, and I'm, I don't really like asking for money, but if you do donate to the link and you will put in there, Michigan GT, live content, something like that. That money will go towards price support. We are going to be raffling off a Phoenix Squadron pack. Brand new, never been open. Your donation, though, has to be $5 or more. <laughs> you cannot, you can't donate 50 cents. You can't donate a dollar. You got to donate $5 and you have to put in the description um, for Planning Face Syndicate live content. So PPS live content, you have to put that in there. That way I know and I could take your information um, and, and it, an email address would be nice too if it's not linked. But we will be raffling that off with it closer to it. If we hit that donation total, we will create a second total because we are going to have a second planning phase syndicate showdown coming up here in the next couple of months. Now we don't have an official date. It, it has to be either June or August. One of the two yeah. because um, JJ is moving here um, in early May. I am officially on PTO blackout for basically the majority of June through July. Um, so we might have this afterwards as like a PAX warm up in August, or we might do it in the beginning or middle of June, depending on when Sword Champ kit, kits come in. So our goal is, is first goal, since I'm the host and I'm Michigan, we're going to donate to Michigan first. But if you would like to donate for <laughs> extra prize support, we will be 100% supporting our planning phase syndicate showdown that is coming up here very shortly. We'll have more info. Enough on that. I don't want to harbor on that and spend an hour having that conversation. But if you would like to donate, like I said, it's paypal.me forward slash PP syndicate. And that is how you can find us. The link is always in the description. A $5 or more donation will go into a raffle. Um, and again, if we hit that goal, the best part will be is if we hit that goal, we hit a second goal. If we can hit $1,500 somehow, then what we could do is actually fly JJ out to Planning Face Syndicate um, to the Michigan GT and have him come join me for live content. So. Heck yeah, that'd be exciting to uh, to bring some more exciting X-Wing, especially for the store level uh, kits or the store level champs. Uh, man, I'm excited, actually, you know, ever since they announced, you know, the return of OP kits, um, it's it feels exciting. Like, I'm really excited for the next uh, Worlds that's coming up and all the events that are going to lead up to that next Worlds event. It's just going to be a great time to uh, to get into the game. Yeah. If you have not talk to your local store about getting a store champ kit. I highly, highly recommend having that conversation ASAP. I do not know how many of they created. Do you, do you know JJ by chance? No. Um, how many has, they've created? Not at all. No. Mm -mm. All I know is that if you get it in and they run out, you're out of luck. So what we're hoping is that everybody will be get in. Our goal is, is to have like 10 store champs between Ohio and Chicago and Michigan, um, I would love to have more than that. So I know for a fact there will be at least two West Side Store Champion kits um, coming. And again, we're hoping for a few more um, to do that. So, yeah. So I'm excited too. I'm excited by the the prize support in there. Um, Worlds was very amazing prize support wise, and I really think that these kits look really good. I mean, think about it, JJ. They, they decided, hey, we're gonna give you hot shots and aces too. And now we're going to give you content for that, like alternate cards. Thank you. I'll take those all day long. Um, mm -hmm. 
And depending on, on which store it is, the stores might be able to do these store champs pretty decent. I was not around for store champ season, so I have no idea what it costs beforehand. Was it like tw 10 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that? Yeah, just about. I think 30 in uh, where I was down in Orlando uh, back in like 2019. So it's about the same. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you're only having to pay $30 a ticket, though, to get in, that's crazy. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, either which way, we will be bringing, I, we will keep an updated calendar and everything like that as we kind of uh, move forward with some of the store champ season. Um, but I'm excited. I like store champs. I think I almost like those a little bit more than going to worlds. Other than I get to see a lot of cool people that I don't get to see normally. But I really, when I did Destiny and we did like store kits and stuff like that, that was fun. Um, I have three Ray, Kylo, and Ray mats. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody nice. wants to buy a Destiny Kylo Ray mat, I have like, they're in great condition. They've only been used, I don't know, maybe a handful of times. Because I also have a, a store Mr. Bones play mat um, kit with Mr. Bones on it. Um, nice. And if so, I'll tell you what. If somebody wants to donate a shitload of money, I will happily, uh, I will happily get rid of that because that there is only, I don't know, there can't be more than a hundred or two hundred of those in the whole world. Not that anybody plays Destiny anymore, but, um, I use my Mister Bones kit when I play Marvel Champions, so it's pretty cool. Nobody knows why I use it, but I do. Yeah. Anyway, so let's kind of move into our first segment that kind of talks about, um what we want out of X-Wing for the next two years. And I I feel this is an important conversation. And obviously this conversation is not some big um, revelation, right? Like we kind of know a little bit of what's coming. We know Source Champ kits are coming, right? We know that there has to be some point changes coming. There's no way AMG is not going to do it. And in fairness, AMG committed to, to doing points updates every, what, two years, something like that? Or not two years, every six months, twice a year? I believe uh, they did in the past, but then they went to uh, uh, they'll do it as needed uh, for it. But it has been well over six months since we had a last point change up uh, for it. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, part of the conversation is just taking a look back at, you know, where we started and where we are so that way we can move forward here. So we'll start with the end of X-Wing 2.0. Uh, you know, as we know, AMG took over and introduced X-Wing 2.0, uh, revamping the point system, uh, bringing down from the original 200 points, uh, which included both the upgrades and the cost of the pilots to separating those and giving us 20 point squads and separating those points into loadout values um they also introduced all the new rules updates for range zero attacks the four scenarios that we currently have for the game and as well as uh new rules updates to uh, the way ionization works and uh revamping uh, quite a few pilots in the game to work with the range zero uh shot and as well as creating a ban list and a restricted list though we've yet to see anything restricted as of yet right now um and just to finish off we just had our world's championship the first worlds that we've had since 2019 uh, uh culminate uh with a couple of surprises on there um practically every faction was in the mix uh leading up up to the cut and it was uh, it was definitely a great time to see everything there um, now going forward you know we do have the next season of the uh, organized play kits that we just discussed about coming out there and part of the uh, the spoils that they gave us during the world's uh, events uh, was uh, some new scenarios, it looks like, uh, or at least um, custom scenarios made for those particular events that are going to be introduced. Now, we don't have any other information uh, other than what they revealed to us during those events, but to me, it seems like we have possibly, at minimum, one new scenario that might be coming out. What do you think? Yeah, so I don't think the scenario is going to come from either of those kits, though. But I do agree with you. I do think we are getting a new scenario. Um, again, that's unofficial. But yeah, that is kind of what they've talked about. We also know that they're going to do Adepticon Worlds 2024. I mean, it's already announced. Mm -hmm. It was announced before the end of 2023 Adepticon. So um, I would say that's extremely encouraging for the game um in and of itself and maybe some of it's the legion piece right like legion had a huge turnout holy crap um, yeah but 
at the same token, it, it shows that they're still invested. This is what they're going to do. You can make your plans now to go for Worlds, um, even if you don't have your ticket, right? Um, so that kind of leads us into, you know, things that we want to see, right? Like, what do we want to see? Obviously, we got our wish with Store Chant Kits. They either already had that planned or they listened, whichever we want to console ourselves with. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. so yeah. that's a benefit that's a positive um so there's that we also really wanted to see continued competitive play support right through a world and that is officially announced um to me some of the big changes i would like to see is a big points shakeup um enough that it gets not rid of Grievous, because I really don't ever want Grievous to go away, um, but gives us something new to play with, right? Like, I'm sick of seeing Vader and the boys and Malorus and her boys on the board, right? Like, it's, it's kind of, like, yeah. irritating to see those. Like, now, that's all I'm going to run. You here's know? a question on you. So, uh, assuming that we have, like, a year, right, to until the next Adept Gun, how many points changes in that time would you like to see happen? Uh, I would like to see three. And let me explain the third one. So I would like to see two, mainly. One right now, or very shortly before Store Champ season. Yeah. I would like to see one around after Gen Con. Um, preferably before October, before our event. But... I would like to see another one around that time. And then the third one, I would like to see a month, exactly one month before Worlds. And I'm dead serious. One month before Worlds. Not a day before, not a day later. One month. I want 31 effing days before <laughs> Worlds to go through this. So that's mid-February. And I want that specifically so that I get my... um crazy change shakeup that I'm that I really really prefer to have during worlds because I think that's to me like that's huge right like being able to have that piece of it um is super super important to me uh in having I don't know where JJ went we just lost JJ but having the ability to have that yeah exactly makes life so much better in my opinion yeah i i agree and so i mean I, it feels like ideally we're only gonna get maybe two points updates um like i i certainly hope that we do have one coming up very soon where we can see a change in the in the game there and probably one i, I would actually put it probably, probably closer to nova just to give us a little more time um to like get used to the game and of course any type of scenarios that may can't come up from here to then like any new expansions with like the Thai bomber for instance coming out um and the uh, the white t2400 coming out and give time for that meta to expand um, but one of the other things that I'm looking forward to that, and at least the hope to, and of course there's been zero, zero, uh, mentions or, or anything, anything like suggesting that's going to happen, but I would love to see some support for Epic play. And the reason for that is, um, spoiler alert for anybody who has not seen the Mandalorian yet, but you know, we're getting to this age of star Wars where we're starting to see, um, uh, not necessarily fleet battles, but more squadron battles. Um, you know, you take a look at, you know, what we've seen so far in like Andor with uh, some of the smaller capital ships and some of the large base ships. Um, same thing with the Mandalorian, uh, where we see several gauntlets and a Mandalorian fleet being developed. Mm -hmm. I would love to set up a scenario where you can... Um, or at least set up a game where you can do that. I mean, sure, you can do that currently with Epic Play and just homebrew all the points, but it'll be nice to see some support going forward for that format. I think it's just an untapped resource that we haven't seen as of yet. And I gotta say, as a as a person who has played Star Wars Armada, I'm a huge fan of Armada, but 
it, it, the size and the feel of X Wing just feels a lot more satisfying for those those type of of, um, well, of like events. Sure, think of it this way too, JJ. If they support Epic Play, <clears throat> you're not taking away from the Armada community because most of us either own Armada Armada stuff too, or we are never going to buy into it. It's one of the two. Like, I'll be honest with you, like at this current time, I'm not going to buy into Armada um, because they haven't shown enough promise in creating new things for me. If they were to come out, say, hey, we're going to revitalize this and we're going to give you a whole new, you know, like faction or we're going to have like 10 more releases over the course of the next three years, I would buy into Armada, like hands down right now. Separatist Armada, but I would buy into Armada. Um, so Epic play just gives us a whole nother like genre of things that we could play. And if you think about it, you get, you, you can make a kit for it and then create a rules and then just essentially say, Hey, you can only use these things in standard for this kit. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, just like they're doing right now. And, and, and I will be honest, I believe that they will resurrect Epic not with new ships, but with either scenario packs or with a revitalization of how to play Epic. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I 100% agree. I think that if you gave it more of a uh, competitive aspect, um, I think that you would spark the interest of people who want to play that as an alternate format competitively. Yeah. And and I'm I'm not usually a fan of standard loadout, but I would tell you right now, a Epic play kit for 50 bucks that has stand like like a hundred standard loadout cards in it is worth the money for Epic. Yeah. So here we're instead of us having to balance all these other points, we're going to literally just give you standard out loadout cards. But we're not just going to give you one, right? We're going to give you six or seven per capital ship, and then we're going to give you you can use either the standard SO one, C ones, you know, the boy ones, the bay ones that are coming out. Um, what are we going to call the Mandalorian pack? Pride of Mandalore. Palm ones. The palm ones. The palms. <laughs> when the palms come out. You know, like, so it's just going to be, you cannot build, like, you can do whatever you want, but we we are encouraging you to not build your own. We're encouraging you to use these standard little cards. And that fixes the problem of them having to actually points adjust, mm -hmm. right? They could create scenarios specifically for this, which Epic already has scenario play to some extent. It's not like the same thing, but it's there. It's based on the Armada logic, right? Yeah. Um, and it's there um, because w we are going to do a local Epic night, like a weekend, I think. Like we're going to do something on a Saturday where we do Epic play um, with some of the old scenarios, even if we have to use old points. Um, I know D from my local group, they were wanting that. Um, and I think there might be enough draw in my local community to do like a Saturday where we do something like that. Um, but anyway... If they created us standard loadout cards for Epic, you immediately fix points balancing issue. You could give and us a setup. new scenario. You could yeah. give us a, yep, get rid of the setup. Like it, all of it just is so much better. And I will tell you, if they did that and that was at Worlds, that would be the first ticket I bought. Yeah. Would be an Epic play. And I would 100%, especially because I can drive there. Um, but I would literally pack every Epic ship I own and I would build Epic lists like four of them and bring them with me so people yeah. could play. Yeah. I mean, and it will be awesome too, right? Like if they can create entire like standardized loadouts for like dedicated wings too, right? Because you have the ability to create a, a wing that flies together as a group and have that group leader and having that set up as well. So that way you could just have six cards in front of you or even five cards if you want to, and just have those standardized, you know, loadout cards just dedicated for those wings and just play them, you know, that would it also further just increase the the or further decrease the time it takes to set up and not having to worry about like setting up each individual card or like read all the interactions because i could tell you as a person who has played epic play quite a bit um keeping track of like 30 cards on your table with all <laughs> the upgrades yeah it, it gets really chaotic really fast and just having those standard light loadout cards just 
you know, have everything right there on one card. It's just so much easier to read and, and do when you're dealing with that many ships. I think that that would be a fantastic uh, idea for, for AMG to revive. Yeah. So before we move on to crazy predictions, which we're going to, we're going to do crazy predictions before we move into list building here in a second. Actually, before we move into Nickel City League stuff, since I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we are going to do, or what I would like to also see, well, I would like to see Bad Batch um, because that re-releases our Lambda. And if they give me a Bad Batch of fucking Lambda, it gives me a reason to buy another Lambda. I don't really need one. I own two. But I will tell you what, if I could get one of those look cool-looking Lambdas, I would buy at least one or two of them. <laughs> probably two. <laughs> I would probably buy two. Actually, I should go sell my lambdas now in anticipation for the cool no. looking lambdas. You you keep one, you destroy it slightly, and just put Moff Gideon hiding inside of it. Like a Lego, <laughs> Lego Moff Gideon. Oh yes, I need some Lego figure Moff Gideon. Um <laughs> But be, besides that, I want three new scenarios. Yeah. I want I want one or I want two this year and one released at Worlds. And you know what the best part about I, I guess I'm the competitive player that just wants the chaos, I guess. Like I'm not super excited if we have like a huge competitive shakeup, but at the same token, if we're gonna do something crazy, let's do something balls to the walls crazy. Let's get a new scenario for worlds. Come on, we said it before. I'll say it again. Give me a new scenario. Nobody knows what it is. Yes. And oh, by the way, we're going to teach you one day before Worlds. So we're going to give you a point shake up in February <laughs> and we're going to give you a new scenario to play with and you get one day to learn it. <laughs> Nobody that would like me for that. <laughs> that would be great, especially if it's like they introduce it during like the last chance qualifier and then that's their warm up for Worlds. <laughs> like <laughs> that, would, that would be super that anybody who played in that would automatically have a hand up in it. But yeah, and that's the thing, right? It's like giving the the upper hand for the people who played the last chance qualifier, and then all the people that won all the store champs and stuff, and see, you know, if does that experience pay off versus you know the transferable skill of you know being able to eyeball distances and stuff like that. So it'll be be really interesting actually to see if that played out that way, how it plays out. So crazy prediction time. We well, I have. I have two crazy predictions that I don't think will come true, but would be amazing if they did. The first one, not super crazy, but I would like to see Empire probe droids or sensor droids or whatever the hell you want to call them because we see them in Rebels. Everybody's on this big Rebels kick. We have Ahsoka coming out. We have all the Rebels characters coming back. When, and Oh, and we have... Um, you know, Jedi fallen, um, whatever. Survivor. It's Jedi Survivor. Survivor. Yeah. We have j that coming out. There is droids in there for the Empire. Now, I don't know if that means we need them for other factions, but at minimum, in my opinion, and I don't need them to do what CIS ones do, I just want probe droids. They are a thing, they float around in space, they don't require. A whole bunch of stuff other than the transport. I want probe droids for Empire. I mean, I want either Republic or, or not Republic, uh, Rebel or Resistance probe droids too coming out of that art that astromech. Um, you know, just a tiny little blip thing, just go and scan something, get a target lock for free. <laughs> We're on that kick, heck yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't have that, JJ. You didn't think of it third. <laughs> The other crazy prediction I have is we will get a new faction in two years. Mm, are you thinking High Republic? That would be nice, but I don't think so. I think the pirate faction. So or we split scum. Okay, yeah, that's into why, two factions. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. Split and scum then, into two factions. And then add new shit to each one. Yeah. I think I think that would probably be 
probably be the best way to go. Um, and for balance reasons, you're able to split off a lot of different characters that like scum to me feels like a hodgepodge of like just everybody, like a catch all for anybody who doesn't swear allegiance to one of these two uh, sides and in, in whatever era they're in. So it would be nice to have like a dedicated faction for, for some of these pilots that would fit together, like a bounty hunters guild, for instance, like faction where you have, you know, just all those bounty hunters in there. And then you got, you know, the Mandalorians and another faction where they have all their, their particular fighters on there. And, you know, with these shows coming out and having all these new pilots and ships and stuff like that, it would be nice to see them um, have their own faction, their own identity and kind of, like further create that mythos and put that onto the table, you know, um, that, that would honestly be awesome to see that. And on top of that, it can ha- probably help break up the staleness of scum right now, which is known as the large base faction currently right now. Uh, maybe give it a couple of, uh, force it to fly other ships and, and have, uh, have different options. Exactly. So, those are my crazy predictions, and like I said, the, 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 the pirate faction could just be a splitting of scum with some new pilots. Um, some new pilots, right? So mm-hmm. I, I, I really feel that I just feel, uh, I don't know, the more we, we're getting pirates in the Mandalorian, we had them in Resistance, I really just feel it's like scum 2.0. And how about this? I don't care if you want to relabel Scum the Mandalorian faction, um, like Mark said, or the um, in in the pirate faction. I don't care. I don't care how you how AMG does it. I'll probably bitch about it later. But it would be amazing <laughs> to have that, right? Yeah. Yeah. For for the for my crazy predictions is we're we're gonna get a wave of uh, Disney Plus series. <laughs> pilots and ships uh coming out um it'll probably be in a card pack my guess um but i believe that probably by mini extravaganza which will be in september we're going to get announced a card pack that would include um some of the crew and pilots from the andor series as well as the mandalorian series and these will be um expansions and pilots for those uh, particular uh, ships and factions uh, for for X-Wing. Which would be and, awesome. And it will also include standardized versions of them, <laughs> as well as customized versions. Well, I think that's a given now. It seems like we're getting... I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get negative. I don't like standardized loadout as much. I just don't. But That's fair. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, let's move on to the Nickel City Season 3 Week 5 League. Currently in-game loss this week. We are still number two by one game <laughs> over NJO. One game over NJO um, in our share division. But we are still technically up there. V-Team had their first loss of the season. So that put them in order 66 at four and one, the only four and ones in the league. Overall, we are seventh, <laughs> um, which is fine. Cause like, again, this is just like a, we're mid season, right? You know, this yeah, is mid season. Yeah. This is this, this feels more like NFL standings than normal. Like I would say we're the Giants, but really we're kind of closer to what the Lions <laughs> did last year. Um, if we were the Giants, we would have like we would we would have been the top of the three and two, not the bottom. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, it was a tough loss this last week. Here um, we had uh, we were matched up against Team Havoc. Uh, myself and Crispy actually took the bye week this week, um, and we vowed to face off each other on the next time we get paired up. Um, but uh, but yeah, we uh, will shake off that loss. We're still well into the run here and just to show you like how close this league has been i mean anybody in this in our division can literally ha- has a shot of taking in the number one spot here i mean it's been such a 
a swing back and forth uh, for some of these games. Um, and it just goes to show you the quality of players uh, that we have in all the different um, teams here for it. Uh, on the other side, though, in the other division, Sunny B team and Order 66 feel like the dominating force uh, there, although I would definitely not count out Fox and CFIS um, being 3-2 and two currently right now, but they've got some some good quality players that can definitely pull out some wins. And, you know, we're, we're at the mid-season point right now. Um, actually, as we speak right now, we're going through the All-Star match. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, essentially every captain from every team uh, nominated a player for um, to represent the division to face off against the opposing division. And whoever wins this week uh, will give the home field advantage for that division when it comes down to the finals uh, of the um, of this particular season here. So we're we're watching that um, very very closely uh, to see how that's going to shake up the uh, the playoffs. Yep, and um, so currently. The I believe currently we had Andre from the Tinder Gods win their game. We had the of course ours Cam Murray won and their game. Cam, Cam Cam won our game. Um, and I'm trying to think of who else. I know Brendan's playing right now on actually on Greg's stream. Dread Champ. It looks like Dread Champ officially won their game. I don't know where Dread Champ is. Where Dread Champ from Punisher. Punishers? Yep. Yeah. So Dread Champ won their game. So technically, Share is up two to one for home field advantage in 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 the in in the system or in the in the league. So we'll see. They if if Brendan loses here. Um, it will be two and two. Mm -hmm. If Brendan wins, that will put us handily at a three and one. And we just need a couple more or one more win to confirm it, yeah. to confirm it. Yeah, and if it does end up being a uh, tie for uh, for the record three and three, then at that point, it'll come down to points scored uh, between all the all the players for the tiebreaker there so uh we'll see and we get definitely got some very very good uh players on all uh all the teams here playing for that all-star league all right so let's move on to our roll call series all right like JJ said, let's break down some bloody lists here. So the first list that we had submitted, and I forgot to look up who it was. Did you look up who it was? I believe this one. Uh, actually, I just clicked off of it, so I'll let you know. <laughs> Nova Titan submitted this one. And this is a Baby Annie Republic list. They have put Baby Annie in the N1 with Outmaneuver, R4P, Fire Control, and Ion Torpedoes. Mace with CLT, Brilliant Evasion, R4P44, Heightened Perception. Luby with CLT, R3, and Brilliant Evasion. Barris Ophi, the Traitor of the Republic, with Brilliant Evasion, R3, and CLT. And then Click with Elusive R4 Besh and Seismic Charges. So, the logic from my understanding with this list, right, is that obviously we want Anakin, even though Anakin is a lower initiative to be kind of outmaneuver, to be out there in the wild. Anakin's doing really fast maneuvers, right? You know, um, being able to keep it. So, I kind of when I looked at this, I said, okay, well, here here's what I kind of see a little bit differently. Um, I would keep Anakin the same, right? I like that Anakin. I like the outmaneuver piece of it. Um, it forces you to kind of say, I have to focus on Anakin. You have to go after Anakin, which allows all your other ships to kind of come in. And that my theory would be is you set Anakin kind of off to the side, your other ships in the middle to the left, and you either are gonna go on an Anakin. Or you're going to put one ship there to bully Anakin, and Anakin's just, Anakin's just not going to care. 
Because what does Anakin get to do, JJ, with his force? Well, for his force, before he uh, activates, he gets to spend a force to do a barrel roll maneuver. Now, it is not actually a barrel roll action, so he can actually take an additional barrel roll during his action step after he fully executes his maneuver and it's not stressed. Uh, so Anakin can really, uh, is the master of the crab crawl um, in the N1 with that ability, just <laughs> being able to do a one bank and then basically, you know, he can barrel roll to a one bank barrel again and he He's basically moving laterally like like an HMP almost <laughs> on the side there. Um, it is definitely a very good control piece in this list with those ion torpedoes on there. Um, I do agree with you with the setup, right? Like putting Anakin on one side and then having your, the rest of your Jedi's on the other side. I would actually put Click in the center. I want him. To, I would want him to be able to reach out and at least support Anakin with his uh, with his ability um, if he's close enough, uh, because the uh, the last thing you want is this two agility ship to get um, go head to head against like three or four ships at the same time. That's a very good way to lose Anakin. Um, but uh, man, this list has a lot of speed. I mean, practically every ship on this list can do a five straight and boost. Right. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely very very speedy they can cover a lot of board at the same at at a very quickly so yeah it's nice yeah i did change mace up a little bit so i went with kind of the idea that you know like i understand the logic and the brilliant evasion um on all all of them the problem i have like mace is the only one that you can do it with and that's because mace has three force but typically you're using mace for reposition his force for repositioning so i put heightened perception and R4P44, right? And the reason behind the R4P44 is because it allows you to do the turnaround maneuvers and still get an action. Yes. And so that's my preferred way to do it, right? And, 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 I, and I only say this because to me, it's like, hey, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to get my force back, and now I get to perform an action. Now I can't perform my booster barrel roll and a whole nother action, but I still can get my target lock or my focus or an evade if, if I really need an evade or something like that as well. Um, and I, I just feel if you're going to have heightened perception, you can't use brilliant evasion because you're, you're just, you're going to be force starved. It's going to yeah. take all of your force. You have to rely a little bit more on outmaneuvering the aspect, right? Um, so Lumi, I kept the same brill. I kept, I, I, with Lumi, I then added heightened perception instead of the brilliant innovation because Lumi then has that choice. The heightened perception is what three point yeah three points. So yeah. you could you you could keep your brilliant evasion in there and that would be fine. Um, but instead of the R three for the target locks because I don't Jedi's don't do a lot of target locking. Um, you can do that, and I I, I don't see the, I, again I don't see an issue in it right because if you are going to do the target lock, it allows you to reroll if you get the bullseye. But because you're an I four, are you going to how often are you going to have the bullseye all of the time? It's it, it feels a little bit more like the R7, A7 would be a little bit more beneficial for her. And what is Lumi's ability, JJ? She can spend a force uh, to allow a friendly ship that's defending. Uh, while they defend, they can reduce hacker's dice from a crit to a hit or from a hit into a focus results. Um, so she is a very, very good defensive um, pilot for the for the Republic just to help um, like lessen the blow um, in terms of like a, like a salvage scenario. I mean, that's, that's the difference between you losing a crate or not. Like it's good. Yes. And then the R4 or the R7, A7 is there as kind of a more, uh, a way to help way. her. Yeah. yeah. To help her with the output. Um, Heightened perception is, and again, the idea behind this list is because you have, if, if you put the heightened perception on, it gives you that ability to have two ships that are going to engage ahead of everybody else. Exactly. So if one of them is dying, you can do it. Um, Barris, I, I did take the brilliant innovation off Barris because Barris has one force. That's it. Barris has one force. I wish Barris actually just had two force. I do not understand the logic in giving a one force Jedi. I just don't. Um, and actually, this is the one Jedi I had actually advocated that they could leave the missile slot on 
and leave her point, you know, leave her points alone because she's one force. She's not like the big bad that everybody else has. Um, I gave her Chopper though. Yes, I agree. I think Chopper definitely is a really, really good call for Barris. Just being able to get that jam out early and then act as that uh, that offensive battery if you need to, to when you absolutely positively need to get somebody uh, crit. Um, Barris can use that force to to improve their result into a crit, so it's it's really nice. Or she could use it defensively. Uh, Barris is definitely a very underrated piece um, for for the Republic. Yeah, and since I can't put missiles on her. I essentially just said, well, what if I uh, let let me let me change what I can do um, without the missiles and and I'm going to give her chopper to be a bully. I'm going to let her go in, not spend that force all the time and be bu a bully. Compassion is just there. It's really not needed. It's just there. Like it's it's a it's a point you can spend. You may use it one. You may use it. You may you, you may you, you probably <laughs> yeah. won't, but you may you may use it. Um, yeah. and then click the only difference I changed with click and I did this because I want to click like you were saying is to be in the center to be a little bit more defensive for Anakin if you're going to run click with Anakin having the Oop. ability to have the dedicated allows Anakin to get yes. a reroll and then gives click a more enticing you know let's shoot at the ship with two agility now right Mm -hmm. And depending on what churn it is, that ship probably took target locks. Yeah. And the other part of it, too, is right. It's just getting that extra point from uh, from reducing elusive down into dedicated opens up the astromech slot. So that way click can take our three astromech. So that way you can target lock two friendlies for clicks ability to to pick and choose who you want. Now, one of the things that um, that most players tend to forget is that click's ability also works on offense, right? So if you happen to have a ship that has a really good setup shot at range three against an opponent, you can use click's ability to negate the the range bonus at that point and make that sh that shot better at range three for your friendly. Um, so it can be a very, very good offensive piece as well as defensive once they get into range one and help them... Um, help them stay alive or take less potential damage against these ships, which is exactly what these fragile seven uh, Delta sevens want. Yep. Overall, I actually like this list and um, I, I would actually probably run. Uh, I would run my version, but I would actually run this list. So mm -hmm. I like, I, I like this, this style of list. So, so the way the list is as is right now, what do you think would be its best scenario? Uh, scramble and assault. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, actually, that's, that's chance is probably the third best. Yeah, I agree. This is definitely a, a very strong scramble and a very strong assault, I think, just to be able to go, go to as many places as you need and contest the objectives as needed. I think you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you do it right, you might be able to take three objectives, a churn in assault, and and not die and not even shoot and then you only need you know what six seven rounds you, in seven rounds you won yeah exactly if you lose nobody you know yeah all, all right. right let's move on to the next one jj you're up all right so the next one here was submitted by sandy uh this is a imperial list here um so we got starting off in the tie interceptor second sister with malice predator shield upgrade and sensitive controls backstabber in the tie interceptor uh this is the battle of yavin version as well as mauler there Iden versio with the standard elusive and ion cannon Moff Gideon with cluster missiles, over two modulators, and targeting computer, and then a Black Squadron Ace to round off this list. This is a very solid list. Um, you got Backstabber and Mauler, the Battle Yajvin versions that are just paired together. They fly very, very well as wingmates being able to boost each other's attacks, rolling three attack dice as long as they're in each other's side arc uh, with afterburners and... 
um, and their their four hole, um, they can definitely be a very very good menace at initiative five. Being able to uh, either strip your enemy's tokens or put in some early damage uh, really quickly, and then that's where second sister comes in with her malice and predator and the shield upgrade, uh, being able to really use all those tokens and abilities to really push in some some damage in there. Iden Versio uh, being the great support piece to help back up Mauler and backstab in this list and then Moff Gideon just being able to use Black Squadron to gain a strain and really punch in those um, those damages uh, with uh, cluster missiles and uh, and basically making it uh, making it hard for those high value targets to stay elusive once they take those strains uh, so it's a very good list there um, I almost want to say that this would be particularly strong in assault um, but I think this probably does very, very well in chance engagement as well, just because it can swarm very well. Um, but uh, but I think uh, this is probably the best at Assault. Yeah. <clears throat> and really the only change I would make is I don't like the Malice Predator. I I would go with Juke. That's just me. Um, and I say that only because either Juke or some sort of a missile maybe. Um, and, and I think... I think people are. I think people miss the Magpulse train sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I I heard somebody on GSP bitch about it, so I don't know. But to me, Magpulse is pretty. I, I think a pretty good um, missile personally. No matter what initiative you're at, um, obviously it's better at high initiative. But it, even at this lower initiative, it's it, it's it's a great crit carrier and. The fact that you could take the target lock, get your rerolls, have the force if you need it. Um, you could also run clusters on her, and one of those cluster, you, you now have two force that you could spend right on that. Um, exactly. Yep. I wish she had two more points of loadout because then I would put hate and clusters, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I like Juke. Juke is uh, my preferred version of second sister but i do really like this list and i really think the moth gideon bully um is really good and i like this version of moth gideon better than the stupid cloaking device version yeah. um i i don't know it's just not my play style so yeah i agree all right and then moving on to the next list here this one submitted by crispy uh, this one is a CIS list that we got here for, called Protect the HMP. Uh, this one starts off with General Grievous in the Belbo Lab with the standard alt maneuver, Imperium Plaving, and Solus One title. Uh, two Magnet Guard Protectors in the Bro Class Starfighter, uh, one of them with Ion Cannons, HLC, and Shield Upgrade, the other with Proton Cannons and that... a Shield Upgrade and Energy Show Charges. All right. So he had, just so you know, he actually had both of them with Ion HLC. Ah, okay, okay. So there was I added the other one on the other ones on as a discussion point. I see, I see. Okay, and then uh, to round off the list, we got a Geonosian prototype HMP with a Kraken sync laser cannon and repulsor stabilizers. Uh, so very interesting list here. So those Magna Guards protectors at Initiative Four uh, to match with General Grievous. These are chunky, chunky ships. I mean, you're talking about having uh, eight health with those shield upgrades. And being able to uh, do a lot of lot of damage uh, with these cannons, and then you either have to face them down, and that's a lot of hull, uh, especially backed up with uh, with Kraken, uh, being able to get those locks um, if they get stuff in bullseye, and that's exactly what they want to do. Or you have to contend with General Grievous, who's going to come in from the side and try to uh, basically sandwich you there. Uh, this is a very very spicy list. I like this a lot. Yeah, and this is the list where we need to get three points back. We need those Magna Guards to go down to four points and that Geonosian to go down to four <laughs> points. Um, and this list is it becomes insanely viable. So this is kind of like I would I have been running those Geonosians and that um or the Geonosian and two H or two Magna Guards and then having five points left over, not for Grievous, but for other shit. And this is this is the list eight crispy has like continually said. You should not run this. This is not good. But I really like this list, and I was running a bomber, uh, a, a 
a, a bomber and um it, this is before iron assembler so it was just a separate destroyed and a bomber but now you can run 404 and iron assembler in this list as well and the idea is is the magna guards protect the gene ocean and then kraken lets everybody keep calculates so the idea would be and this is the discussion point i wanted to have Chris, or with with you jj is if i have energy shells and proton cannons like is that like maybe the proton cannon is silly and it should be hlc so it could go off every round but like to me like you give the energy shells there they're holding their calculates each of those things will have two calculates you now have to worry about coming in contact with them and if i could get a proton cannon shot off i get two calc or two calculates to help me if i can't get one off i'm shooting an er energy shell and i still have a shield upgrade like, <laughs> um, actually, I think I'm more of the opinion of having both of them, right? One particular magnet guard with ion cannons and the other one with the proton cannon energy shell. Now, here's the reason why. So, you know, obviously their initiative match and it's uh, so it's easy to to move them at one at a time at the same initiative. So that way you can make sure that you can get them into position. But since you really want these magnet guards to be in that bullseye to both trigger Kraken, number one, and then their dead to rights ability in the bullseye, that also helps set up their cannons. You want to be able to set up that ion on to that particular ship so that way you know where that ship is going to be in the proximate vicinity. And then that will help set up that follow up shot from those bullseyes for both the magnet guards. Uh, for this particular list that also helps with grievous as well to help come in and outmaneuver that ship that's ion so that way you can actually True. just faint and have the magnet guards just go right past them if you're confident enough that grievous can go in and just wreck that particular ship that's ionized so there's a lot of utility in having at least a single control piece there um my uh, while i do like the incredible spike damage from proton cannons and energy shell charges it's it my worry comes uh from later on in the game right when you run out of energy energy shell charge and you use your proton cannons as well afterwards you're going to have to wait at least two turns before you can get that big spike again that spike damage from that particular ship whereas ion cannons is consistent and you can range control really well to help keep that hlc on target especially if you're facing off against a medium base or a large base um it it is i, I think both are are worth the the merit conversation but i definitely do like the spike of the proton cannons and the energy shell charges considering that proton cannons can have that passive mod to change a, a focus into a crit um i think that's very very huge for these uh magna guards that are going to be token starts so fair enough all right, the next list we have is called There Is No Try and Tri Fighter. We have two Aflax, Volan with Shield, Elusive, Deadmans, Shurtek with Ensnare and Gravitic Deflection, and then an, a Bomber with Proxies and Landing Struts. So the first thing I would ask is why does my Bombardment not have Independent Calculate? But uh, it, it was actually a. Uh... <laughs> It was uh, something that was omitted when I was actually putting this in there. But yeah, it should have independent calculations okay. on there. Absolutely. All right. So this is a list that I actually, I've actually been working on for a little bit here, uh, mainly because I miss Chertek. Um, I've actually like running Chertek for a bit, and I have not seen Chertek in the meta. Now I understand it's five points, and that's probably why. But this list has a lot of use on there. So Chertek's ability, if you're not familiar with it, essentially when you're attacking a ship that has a tractor token on it, you get to reroll dice on both offense or defense uh, for each um, for that ship. So uh, this makes Shirt Tech very consistent on offense. Um, but I Shirt Tech is actually the battery to help fuel everything else. So if you're able to um, get that and snare off, especially if you're matching initiatives with another ship um, and you're ending having to go second or you're dealing with lower initiative ships, being able to move Chertek into the path of your bombardment drone to set up a proximity mine or to set up the Aflex bullseye calculates 
um, this really, really helps, um, like help eliminate that ship uh, because you're putting them in a bad spot. Worst case scenario, that ship ends up doing a rotate and they end up stressed and boom, you've just negated their dial or at least minimized their dial for the following turn there. Chert tech is deceptively hard to destroy, um, especially when you get those passive rerolls from gravitic deflection. Um, Chert tech can definitely do a lot of work and for a four hole ship, that ensnare and gravitic deflection is very, very good on that particular ship. Um, we don't see him as much just because we do have other options, um, like Grievous, namely, at, at five points. Uh, but Chart Tech uh, works to make the rest of this list better. And having three Tri Fighters, two of the, actually all three of them, Initiative 5, uh, being able to position themselves in where you want to have that that ship uh, tracked it into just makes them even much more deadlier in this list. Yeah. And I think the difference is I would dump elusive a hundred percent on Volan. I would not, I would take predator uh, every day of the week, or if you want to be tricky, take trick shot. I don't like trick shot on Volan because I tend to die quicker because <laughs> I try to get quick trick shot off, off too often. Um, you could also take out maneuver on Volan if you really want to be cheeky. Um, hey, out maneuver on a tractor ship. I mean, that's that's pretty gross. <laughs> that's yeah. negative two agility. <laughs> so it's anyway that that's that's the whole thing. Um, all right, the next one. All right, who had the try list? Was that you? Yeah, that was my list. The tries. The tries. Well, this must be mine. Sandy's. Yeah, other this is Sandy's. List. Yeah, so this is another one here by uh, by Sandy submitting a CIS list. So we're going to start off with Cad Bane in the Rogue Class Starfighter. He has Proton Cannons, Proton Rockets, Contraband Cybernetics, False Transponder Codes, and the Sandy Blood title. Count Dooku making an appearance here in the Sith Infiltrator with Hate Death Watch Commandos, Proton Bombs, the Scimitar title, and the TA-175 Tac Droid, followed by three Karoto AI Holdouts, uh, that's the Vulture Droids with Crack Shots and Energy Shell Charges. And then the Iron Assembler uh, to round off the list with Energy Shell Charges, Munitions, Failsafe, and the Struts to uh, round off that list. Uh, I... Uh, I absolutely like this list a lot. The TA-175 is the um, is the tactical droid that gives everybody with a calculate in their action bar a calculate when one of your ships dies. Uh, so when you look at those Kelrudo AI holdouts, um, they can essentially uh, pass off their tokens to one of their other ships when they die and then uh, gain those, uh, the rest of the ships also gain those calculates on there, uh, which is really, really good there. Um, the only people that would not benefit from the TA-175 would be Dooku and Cad Bane since they don't have that calculate on their uh, action bar. But uh, Cad Bane, I mean, having those that proton cannon and proton rockets, that's some heavy firepower that's coming in. And since they only trigger in the bullseye, if Cad Bane gets that bingo shot, that is going to hurt. Uh, you got Death Watch Commandos as well, uh, just being out there taking pot shots whenever you need to. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that if you kill a commando, that also triggers the TA-175 on it, if I'm not mistaken. Are you sure? I have to double check. All on right, because that's crazy if that happens. I know. That is actually, a, uh, that would be a really good way to uh, to get those extra tokens if you need it. Well, I, I wonder if that's what Sandy is thinking. It, it could be. I don't know. Look it, look it up, JJ. Because that's, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, if, absolutely. If that's the case, <laughs> if that's the case, we should be reconsidering TA-175 instantaneously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. After a friendly ship. Okay, never mind. You have to have it has to be a friendly ship and it has to have okay. a calculate on right, its bar. Right. So yeah, no, never mind. Broken combo. Never mind. Disregard. <laughs> but um but man that that would be something uh but yeah it's still i mean you got those commandos just giving out strains uh and this can cover a lot of ground it's uh it's definitely a fun list yeah yep and, and there's lots of things you could do with it you know i would put independent calculates if it were me on iron assembler because i mean why not right like you can't share them so that's probably what I would do. 
But other than that, I like this list. Uh, and this might be something I have been playing around with those Calorotos just because I can. Because um, <clears throat> my theory is they're going to screw something up at CIS and I'm going to have to rethink what I want to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see when, if, and when those, uh, those points changes. Well, come, the the points are great. coming. Jesus Christ. Like, stop that. <laughs> we know they're coming. <laughs> they're not, they're not going to go, Hey, let's just take the world's meta and we're going to store champs. If that's the case, like I'm just flying FO or CIS and calling it a day. Like I'm, it'll be the same list that I've flown for the last like nine months. And it's boring. <laughs> it's boring. That's yes. boring. Stop it. It is. It is. It is. Keep, let me keep Grievous, but everything else. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get new points just to, to try out new stuff. Yeah. Um, but either way, thank you all for joining us. We will be back. We probably won't be back this week with any stream games because there isn't anything to stream other than uh, Nickel City stuff. And I think Greg has picked up all those games. So. If for some reason uh, some games get picked up, we'll stream them um, going forward. Other than that, what we will be doing is we will be back next Sunday night for sure. Next Sunday night at 2100 Eastern time. If you did not know, we have started a um, donation that if you would like to donate $5 or more to our PayPal and you type exclamation point, PPS live in the chat, which I guess I don't know how to do because um, that will help give us money. So to be able to stream more live content for any of the upcoming um, stuff that we have for worlds prep and world, the road to world. So um, if you want to help donate, we have a donation link there. We are going to give away to anybody that donates $5 or more. We're going to have a raffle for a Phoenix Cell Squadron pack that I am willing to donate. Unopened, untouched, brand new with the beautiful Hera B-Wing, which, by the way, they need to fix an X-Wing so that that B-Wing can come in and just destroy a ship in one turn. It should say, if you roll four natties, you or the other opposing ship is destroyed. That should just be the card that says that. Especially after it <laughs> kills a um what what was the ship that it kills in Rebel Rebels? Uh the thing that you love in Armada. I can't remember the name of it. The uh oh my gosh. It's a little weird like diamond U shaped ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the um oh my god, why can't I remember the name of it? It'll come to me eventually. <laughs> Starts with an A, I think. But anyway, um, if you Arkansas. would, Arkansas. there you go. There you go. If yeah. you would, if you would like to, we are going to raffle one of those off to anybody that donates five dollars or more. If we hit our goal of five hundred dollars to be able to bring premium X Wing content in person to you for the Planning Phase Syndicate Showdown Two and for Michigan GT. With that being said, thank you all. Have a good night. And we will see you next week, Sunday at 2100 hours. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great week.